You're going to buy it, the 5,600 square foot that exists today, you're going to buy that with private money as well as fund an immediate expansion, doubling it in size, plus adding outdoor. Yeah. And then when, when would you anticipate filling that? When would I anticipate? What was that? F filling that. How long of a ramp up period do you need to get stable? It's 80% right now. And you know, there's no competition in the area and three mile radius says it needs almost 29,000 square foot um, at seven square foot a person. Um, so I, at, at five move net move-ins a month, it fills in a year. Okay. So what do you do in a year if you're full? Either I refi at that point and uh, pay all the investors off or I go back for more investor money and see if the people who are in want to stay in and expand at that point. Okay. So let's just say I get, I get it's at 11,000 square feet. I can go to the bank. I can get my 240,000 or whatever it ends up being. And, um, that 240 is handled. So now I'm gonna, things filled up so good and I got, I'm a waiting list. At that point I decide how big I wanna go. The fence would then have to be expanded. There's a total of five acres. I mean, you can put a lot of storage there. So I guess it all just depends on how this first round goes. And you just nailed it. It, it all depends on how the first round goes because, um, right? There are cost benefits to every decision we make. There are costs and benefits to every decision we make. And um, one of the things that Ken and I were talking about is if your goal is cash flow, it might make like round two or round three of expansion are going to put a temporary setback to your cash flow. So it might make sense to not rush to create as much equity as possible, because in order to create that equity, you have to sacrifice short-term cash flow. Um, and your work situation and your goals are going to dictate which of those uh, you weight more heavily. But the flip side to that is expanding more quickly is the most efficient way to use private money, because private money is the longer you have it, the more expensive it is. And so you want to get in and out as quick as possible. But if you're going to replace that private money with um, permanent bank conventional lending uh, funding, that is lower cost money over the long term. But in the short term, it's very expensive. Anytime you go into a traditional bank loan, you're going to have, you know, at least some relatively hefty closing costs, five to 15 grand or more depending on the size of the loan, but that gets kind of, you get double whacked with a prepayment penalty. So once you go to traditional financing, that financing has to stay in place for at least three years to get past the worst of the prepayment penalty. There might still be a small one, uh, but it's more manageable. In the first year, it's often 5%. So, um, I only know this because I've been in this situation where I put bank financing in and then was ready to expand, but the, that bank didn't want to extend me any additional money. And to get rid of them, I had to pay them 25 grand in a prepayment penalty at that point. So I had to wait like a year and a half to get from a 5% prepayment penalty down to a 3% where it was a little more manageable. Um, and I don't want to see you guys unknowingly enter into uh, that kind of, position between a rock and a hard place.